it was a tough one. It was between this one. <laughs> But Kyako won with flying colors. Kyako is uh, our pride and joy. Is an elite type of singer. Kiak is actually from Bazan, Congo, uh, which is a, a small area right up north of Angola, almost border with uh, Congo. And um, they speak Kikongo there, which is one of the most beautiful languages. Uh, Kiaku won a lot of prizes with this uh, album and especially this song. It's still common in Angola for you to, if you're an artist and a song, gets really popular to take a CD and go to iconic places and sell it. This song has sold 15,000 copies in one day. The phase that uh, Angolans are going through now uh, is to going back to the roots. Whereas before, most of the songs, like I said in the previous uh, video, in the previous video that I did, that um, most songs that came out in the 80s and 90s were sung in Portuguese. Portuguese colonization was very heavy. Some countries even say that Angola is not Africa because we have so many of the habits of the Portuguese uh, from the language to the way we dress, to the way we speak, to our music, even the way we dance song. Um, people are embracing the African print whereas in the past African prints in Angola was always related to illiteracy and uh, very poor and very um, humble background, something you wouldn't feel proud of. Whereas now it's something we are proud of, you know, we are proud of our grandmothers um, that never left the cloth. And, you know, the new singers, what they're doing is embracing the roots uh, more and more. Um, Puto Portuguese, Yuri da Cunha, Kiadaf, uh, a lot of them, Editusa. So, um, so having a song who has a little bit in Kikongo, it's probably, uh, it has a little bit more of a grounded feel to it. He also primes himself for the Portuguese. When he speaks Portuguese, he's always very, very well spoken. Uh, and he has this soothing voice, so it's a perfect combination when he mixes both. Um, so the song is called Set Set Rosa Set Min Seven and Rosa. Uh, and this uh, is actually mean flower, the flower rose. Uh, it's also a name, just like in English. Um, and I think he means set set rosa in the context of the song. I think he means seven days rosa and being a woman. It talks about. So let's go. I want to skip the intro, it's too good. <laughs> On this particular song, it doesn't use kalam. He sings in between Kikongo and uh, Just like I said before, a lot of the songs have double meanings. A lot of the songs usually are messages. Um, on this occasion, it's kind of a straightforward message. He's talking to, um, he's describing the society uh, as it is today, uh, but he's speaking as if he's of himself. So here we go. <laughs> Say so says, Não quero saber das flores, de ilusões, de paixões, das meninas na esquina e da tuna baby na discoteca. So, uh, não quero saber das flores. I don't want to know about the flowers, uh, illusions, and the passions uh, of girls in every corner and tuna baby. Tuna baby is just. Uh, it's the name of a song, of a very famous Kuduro song that refers to very short, tight shorts on girls. So he basically saying that he doesn't want no distractions, no, um, not that kind of lifestyle. Then he goes on. 
O coração é cansada na minha casa lá na samba. Que ei, não dá na chuva de A minha cidade é cheia. Sorry, e é da a ressaca da farra, um, o coração na calçada. He says uh, about ressaca uh, means hangover. So he talks about he doesn't want to know to drink and then wake up, in, waking up in a hangover. He doesn't want to coração na calçada. It means like giving his heart away and just leaving, you know, leave loving women promiscuously. Basically, that's what he's trying to say. And then he says, na minha casa lá na samba que inundou na chuva de ontem. In my house in Samba, Samba is the neighborhood that flooded in a poor neighborhood, that flooded in a, with the rain yesterday because of in referring to the, the houses in, in one the certain neighborhoods still having a very poor condition. So when it, when it rains, the houses flood because the ceilings are not proper. So basically saying, here I am living this, you know, crazy life but then my house, when it rains, it, it floods. So what am I doing with my life? So he's basically questioning his own ways. He says he doesn't want that kind of lifestyle anymore. He says, uh, and then he goes, uh, now he says, my, my city full of people who just doesn't take life serious. All they want is to drink and party. Um, they're not really helping my country to grow, my land, my love, to you. Yeah, Crecheo is in Cape Virgin Creole and uh, it just means my sweetheart. So he's saying uh, this lifestyle that a lot of the people uh, have in Luanda it's not helping because we're losing jobs, because we went out partying, you know, this lifestyle just doesn't help. It's not productive and it's not helping Angola to grow. Yeah. It's my land, my big love to you, my love. And, and now he speaks in King Congo and he, uh, the chorus is in King Congo now. I told you before, I don't speak none of the native languages, but I ask my friends, uh, thank you for those who helped me. And he actually saying, I have a problem, you know, I have this problem. How am I, please help me. So basically that's what he's saying. <laughs> I have nothing to say. Everything that I had, everything that I had, I lost it. And it says I had. I tinha asas com minha rosa. I had wings with my rose, uh, with rose uh, wings. I had. Uh, we could fly away. We had something that could flourish. Basically, that's what he means. I tinha tinha asas. But that's just the way he writes. You know, he he. He romantizes everything he writes, and you have to kind of try to figure out what is the double meaning in it. Um, yeah. I'm just gonna go back. But Mazu Salario Mimbriago, so basically, he, he, he wasted all his money, his salary, in this type of lifestyle. So now he lost her. Oh, yeah. I think in to set to set rose, I think he means, I think, this is my interpretation, that set referring seven to seven days of the week, it's in between seven and seven roses, like I keep changing roses every day, you know, every seven days I had a different rose in my life. A cor do meu cabelo the color of my hair, so meaning my, my grace, it just, um, it's just uh, regrets. They only leave regrets. <sighs> How can you not love this? <laughs> So, uh, what else do I have to say? This is arguably a kizomba. Uh, so, if you were a DJ and you're playing in a 
seen where just Angolans or that you know is going to have uh, Angolans. I wouldn't say this is a song that you would play at the beginning of the night. This is not the type of song I don't think uh, it will get people jumping out of their seats. You need to put into context, Angolans only dance the songs they like. Now, this is a song that we will all love. It's a song to keep the pace, but it wouldn't be a song that gets them out. If uh, you want to impress Angolans and you want them out of the seat to, you know, get them in the dance floor, you're more likely to get that uh, from a retrozuk, uh, a really good compa, or uh, one of the songs that, you know, the Mark Dero of Kizomba around the 80s. Uh, those are the songs that's going to make us go to the dance floor. Now, at this point, you will, you have their soul engaged and you have their brain engaged because the song is talking to us and it's talking uh, something, and the lyrics have something, a message, uh, an important message. So most of us, especially when it comes to the chorus, who want to put a hand on a heart because it's talking about Angola, a minha terra, o meu amor, a minha crecheu, a ti, you know. And then, but then you have to be very careful in what song you're going to play just after that. So you don't want to mix with something like, I don't know, a filho do Zua, no disrespect, or um, I don't know, I say quatro Pedro, because they don't have this, they are not in the same league of type of music. Uh, you you want to go, I uh, don't know, Paulo Flores, uh, you want to go Yuri da Cunha, to certain, you know, you want to go, you know, that, because you, you know, you need to keep that flow. Right. A nice Grace Evra, Tabanca Jazz, um, you know, some, something like that, you keep the same energy because they're just as good. Um, don't forget, Angolans only dance the songs they like. Um, and we're very sensitive. Okay. You know, um, transition of the song is just as important, so you can lose us on a transition. Uh, but if the song that comes after is really, really, really good and you did a great job uh, matching the same energy, then we'll keep us there. And that's kind of, I think, every DJ goal is to keep people dancing, right? Mm -hmm. If I probably say Angolan is the hardest ones to, to please. Um, and that's the reason is because we have so many good DJs. Uh, the, the, the level of knowledge of African music is, is extensive from very early age. Uh, we're exposed to music from all over the world and we develop a taste for it from very, very early age and we can become very, very critical. If you were to play in a festival scene, it wouldn't matter as much because the attachment these people have is more towards the dance. Uh, it's not so much about the music you play. People will dance regardless, even if they, even if they're not enjoying the song so much. If they enjoying the dance, they will keep on dancing, even if the song energy goes down or it changes into a different, you know, song that we. Angolan slash palops would not think that's um, a good song to, to match with, um, which can be misleading because if everyone is dancing, you kind of have that impression that you're doing a great job. It's just that I know both markets really well. And I know in the dancing scene in Europe, in America, uh, the factor that it's more, the appeals to you the most is the dancing, even though a lot of you are starting to have a really good taste if you were in a dance floor and you're having a nice dance with someone, if someone is a good lead, if the change into a song, you will carry on dancing. Whereas we Angolans will have no problem whatsoever and say, I'm not really feeling this song. It happens, we don't take, we don't see this as a, a bad thing. Even it, it happens a lot of the times, you go to the dance floor, we start dancing and the guy starts to like, I don't know that song or the beat just doesn't seem right, you know. When I wait to the next one and go like, yeah, sure, and and that's that. That's no no biggie. Um, when it's in a in a festival scene, this can can this can come up come across as rude. It's also very perfectly fine, normal and usual for us to go and dance one song and then after the song, thank you. We want to dance that song. It's a different type of way of observing music or and and to dance. We really have to have a great enough a good enough reason to get out of the seat. Because we love the social part of it, we love to sit down and talk. Even if you're not talking, we love to just the environment, just watching. You know, everyone um, nicely dressed, uh, the laughter, drinking. You know, just enjoying presence and enjoying the music. It's it's perfectly fine. Um, if we get to dance, perfect, great bonus. But if you don't, it's not a big deal. It really, isn't a big deal. 
and it's just different um and a lot of people don't understand that this is uh just just the way we are this is how the festival scene started right you supposedly you you go for in the festival and have classes during the day then you practice at night that's kind of the concept you know uh, i'm not saying what's right and what's wrong or that the Angolan way is the right or the Palop way is the right way or the festival is the wrong way. I'm not saying that. I'm just telling them I know both and I know exactly how it works. I, I would say this song, was, it's a, a good song. It's an energy keeper, but it will not get them jumping from, from the seat. Um, however, uh, songs who have a sang in Kimbundo in a, in a native language are the ones that are winning at the moment. They're, they're the songs and, you know, that it gets our attention immediately. Uh, if you're a dancer, please, um, you no. need to match, uh, it, even though it has a nice kick to start with, you know, you have that flow, it gets kind of toned down by the way he sings and what he's saying. But not so much what he's saying, even his tone of voice is very soothing. I wouldn't say, you know, don't really do much of this, you know, try and keep it up here. You know, I wouldn't say here, because we do want to dance San Pasada, it's a nice song, has a nice energy. But too much of this, you know, it just, it gonna, you're going to ruin the flow. Keep it on those foundations, you know, and really, really work on them. You can do some hesitation movements, you can do... Uh, you have a lot of repetition, repetitions. You can do some, you know, repetition movements that, you know, some movements that require weight changing. That keeps the flow really, really nice. You don't really need too many pasadas, too many sedas, too many drops and limbs and tricks to make a night just because it's kizomba. But yes, you can do some pasadas and some saidas. I'm not saying don't do them. I just say. Keep them to a minimum. Keep that that connection with the music. When we talk about connection, let me clarify this once and for all. We talk about connection with the music, not with the other person. That comes after. If you have a, a connection with the music and the person, then, yeah, it's a match in heaven. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, I hope you liked it. Uh, this one was a tough one, um, choosing between Zebedee. I think uh, I will keep making your life hard and asking you to choose it for me because I, I spent the whole week debating, listening to music, song after song after song, and it's just so many that I want to do. Uh, I'm having a great time. Thank you so much for the support you, you've been showing. It's been absolutely amazing. Um, uh, please share, subscribe to the channel. I I I need your help in doing that. I see you same time, same place next week.